Hey everyone, Cody here, and today we're going to be doing another dabbed painting uh, with the trowel and the gloss enamels. I feel like it's kind of my signature style now, and I really don't see anyone doing this type of painting, and I feel very comfortable with it, which is very important when you're creating artwork. You want to feel comfortable in making it. You know what? I was going to do this, and I wasn't sure, but I'm going to do it real quick. So before we get started, I'm going to show you some pieces. And each of these pieces that I show you is like a different type of technique, right? So this is a piece of artwork that I did. It's an abstract, obviously, but I did it with acrylic. Now, the thing I like about acrylic is this, this texture, okay? You can, you can feel the rigidness of the textures on the piece. And this was done by taking a small plastic scraper like a little drywall scraper and just running through black and white until it made gray and then as I kept making those grays I kept applying it so it became like a thick almost uh, pasto pesto paste I don't know what you would call it but anyway impasto impasta I have no idea what the word is that I'm thinking of but anyway so I just kept layering it so it became a very thick layer so this again that's the piece and next to my beautiful weed whacker. Um, but the reason I'm showing you this is because it's a cool piece, but it's not me. Okay? Fun. Fun to make. Very cool. Looks very abstract. But ultimately, I know it's not me. So let me move on to another one. So this piece right here is just jagged, like, brush strokes that I did with gloss enamel. And again, this might be cool for somebody. They might like it. They, you know, people might enjoy doing this style. But after doing it, I know it's not me. Here's another one. This is a very simple minimalist abstract. And, you know, it's just blue, white, and gold. The blue and white are gloss enamel. The gold is abstract. And again, you can kind of see that I just layered it to make texture. Now, don't get me wrong. I do like this painting but it's not me. Here's another scraped abstract that I did, and I did like it kind of when I first made it, but as it kind of just sat there, I liked it less and less. I'm not sure why. It just, after they sit for a while, I, okay, here's the problem, is I'll make a piece, and then I'll like it at first, and then I'll set it down for a while, and then I won't like it. That's just kind of how it goes for me. So I kind of have to give a piece time to really decide whether I like it or not. Now I'm going to set another piece down real quick and just show you. But this, these scraped paintings like this, which I, I did in a video, this I really like doing. Um, I really get, like when I look at it, I, I'm happy about this this piece, right? And these dabbed paintings that I that I've been doing, where I just stipple the paint. This, I like that. I'm happy with it. It just, it looks cool. It's very dynamic. And I think part of the problem comes with the fact that I, I'm very insecure about the, the canvas, okay? So I don't like paintings that have a lot of white space or a lot of solid blocks of one color without, you know, movement. I've just come to realize that that's just who I am as an artist. And... You know, this is cool, these are all cool, but like, I like, like I said, I like this painting, but there's just too much solid blocks of color. So that's just me. It's important to kind of realize as an artist, like, what you're trying to achieve um, from the art you're making, but also what it is that you like to do and what makes you happy as an artist. And I could do these other paintings all the time, but they would make me unhappy and it just took me a long time to kind of realize that. But anyway, I just wanted to show you some different styles um, that I had been testing over the last few weeks. And really, it's not me. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, doing the scraped and the dab paintings because I'm happy with those paintings. And I will, con I will do a Pollock style painting at 1,500 subscribers. So for everyone that's asked me, yes, I plan on still doing a Pollock style painting. I even have a large canvas reserve. But 
We've got to hit 1,500 subscribers before that happens. Okay, so let's move on to today's painting. Sorry for the sidetrack. I just felt like I wanted to say that. Today's painting is a dab painting. We're going to be doing it on watercolor paper because I don't have any large um, acrylic paper. Even though this is gloss enamel, it's similar to, to acrylic, I suppose, just because it's water-based. Um, all right, so we're going to be using our trowel, which is going to be interesting because I don't think I've done a, used the trowel on a small surface like this, like a piece of paper. So we're going to see how that goes. Now you can see I've already got the paper taped down. I left it on the pad. The reason is, is because I tend to have it where if I tape the paper down to some other surface, it tends to warp. I want to see if this would actually help with that. Um, so I've got the, the cardboard of, of the pad still under this last piece of paper and then I just taped it down to see if it'll stay straight this time. Um, another reason is because obviously there's stuff all over the table, there's paint, so it's gonna make it wavy if I just try to tape the paper directly to the table, so we don't want that. Lastly, let's cover the colors. This is a, a bright pink, it's called taffy pink, and it, it does look like taffy, so I, I, you know, I think that the name is uh, apt for the color that it is. This is a, kind of a fuchsia type color, um, I don't remember the name, but you know, fuchsia. Uh, and then we've got like a, almost like a royal purple. Um, so I figured I'd, I'd use these pinks and purples, put them together and see if they turn out good. I actually don't know how they'll do as a color combination. I feel like this probably doesn't fit these two. Like these two with gold I've done, gold and white, and they, they actually look pretty good together. But this almost like, 80s neon almost paint. Um, I don't know how it's going to do with those. So we're just going to see. But I have them laying around. Um, I'm almost out, so I figured I'd use them up. So here we go. So we're going to start by putting our paint into little pockets, as we always do with this um, style of painting. And we want to try to fill in the gaps, but we don't want to put too much paint. The problems I've had in the past with some of the paintings I've done with this uh, dab technique is that too much paint gets on there and then it starts to pool into the center of the piece, whether it's canvas, whether it's paper, and then, you know, those colors kind of pull together. In fact, um, I, I don't have it out over here, but uh, one of the paintings I did for a video, you didn't see it. Um, it was the light of summer. So it was like the red and gold um, dabbed painting that I did, but there was too much paint. so. After the video and the, vi the painting had set, some of those paints kind of pulled together and, uh, and there was too much paint in the middle. So that can be a problem and I want to try to avoid it if possible. So I'm, I'm trying to learn to use a little less paint and just try to make it go all over and then add more later. It's kind of like cooking. It's a lot easier to add a little bit more than it is to take it off, right? So. Here we go, we've got our colors separated, kind of spread out, and now we're going to go ahead and kind of push into these colors and move them around the paper to get our desired technique. Now sometimes I'll just kind of fan out in, in the area where the color began. Where, so like if I was starting here, I'd just kind of smash around it. Um, but other times I'll just kind of pull these colors out and try to really get them to move around the, the surface of the paper or the canvas, whatever I'm using. So, all right, it looks like we didn't use enough paint, which is fine. We can add some more. But honestly, I think these colors are actually going to do pretty well together. Um, I'm a little surprised. Not, you know, completely surprised, but... I, I am a little bit surprised. I didn't think that they were going to do super well together, but they actually do look pretty good. So and I'll just put a little bit more there. And then we're going to put a little there, 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 and there. Okay, so now that we've got those down and we can try to fill in the gaps, we're going to pull these through. And we're going to start hitting these little 
pockets of raw paper. We're gonna try to fill those in. All right, come on, work with me here. Sometimes it just doesn't wanna go where you want it to. Okay, so you, I don't know if you can hear it, but the paint is starting to pull the paper up. So it's starting to kind of warp around a little bit, which isn't that big a deal, honestly, because as long as the paint doesn't pool, it's not that much of an issue because the paint can, or the, the paper can be flattened out later. So that's not really that big a deal. All right, so we've got a little bit of pooling right here. You can see that it's, it's moving a little bit. So we're gonna try to use any of these areas with a little bit more paint to fill in these areas with less paint. You know, kind of makes sense, right? All right, so we've got, we've got a little bit of pockets with, um, with a little bit of pooling. I mean, we've got a bunch of gaps too. So what we're going to try to do is, it looks like we could use some more purple down here and a little bit more pink down there. So we're going to try to kind of use those up and really push that in and mix these colors, but also get them kind of pushed around the paper here. And when I pull the uh, trowel up, I try to pull it up like straight up so that it leaves the little kind of star shapes, I guess. All right, so one problem that we're having, and you can probably see it, is that it's getting a little muddy down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off because after you've pressed it down so many times, those colors kind of start to mix together. And a little bit of that is okay, but I don't like a lot of it because then you start to lose those distinct colors. Oh no, I just got paint on my sandals. That's terrible. Um, so the, the only way that we can really correct this is unfortunately by adding a little bit more paint. I don't want to add too much because I don't want it to pool. But if we can kind of add just a little bit and get these colors to kind of mix, then I think we'll be okay. So we'll add a little bit up there because there was a little bit of a gap there, there, and there. And I think that's good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and kind of try to get these colors spread out. So this technique is kind of a balancing, like a, uh, a test in balancing, because if you use too much paint, then it pools. If you don't use enough paint, then it starts to just continue to gray over and over and over, and you lose those distinct colors. So this technique, while not necessarily hard, there is a little bit of... Uh, trial and error in it and kind of learning how to get those colors to kind of maximize without using too much which I think we're kind of getting into that territory now by adding a little more but you know we're losing some of that distinctness and I'm trying to keep it but I think I'm about to add too much So now I'm just going to try to pull some of these other colors into these other areas down here where, where we've kind of lost it and see if I can just add a little bit color to them so they're not so runny. 
All right. Now I've got a good base to work with. Okay, I think we're pretty good. Now, the only real question will be is if it pools. Unfortunately, I won't know right away, and I could hit it with a heat gun. I do have a heat gun, and I could run over it with a heat gun to kind of get it to dry faster. The problem with the heat gun on, on gloss enamel is that it tends to The problem with gloss enamel is that if you run a heat gun over it, it tends to cook the paint. Um, literally, like it will start to bubble. Um, so we're going to leave it and hopefully this piece will dry and there won't be a lot of pooling to pull those colors. Hopefully we didn't use too much. It's kind of the downside of this method. Uh, I ripped it a little bit. That's okay. Um, framed, you, you wouldn't even see the edge, so it's really not that big a deal. Um, but anyway, once, uh, I, I really won't know if this piece is good until it dries. So honestly, from this point on, it, it's just kind of like a wait and see kind of thing. On canvas, it's not as bad because... The canvas, it seems like it absorbs a little more. Um, and it's a little more forgiving because it's because it's not paper, it doesn't like bend as much. Um, the problem I have with paper is that, you know, because it's paper and you're applying a bunch of weight to it, it just kind of starts to warp. Canvas doesn't really do that. So canvas is a little easier to work with in that regard when doing these types of paintings. All right, well, I've got it off. Did rip a little bit, unfortunately. Uh, but overall, not too bad. Um, it's not my favorite. Only because I couldn't pull more of that color down here. Overall, it's not a bad painting, but I don't like how much, uh, I don't like how lackluster this corner is. So, uh, there we go. So you can see that really none of the pink even though i pulled some of the pink down here it just didn't stay it just kind of muddied so i don't like that um however the corners and stuff are pretty good i like that top corner and i do like the the spread of pink so overall it's it's not a bad painting those colors actually worked better than i thought they would and it's kind of cool it's almost like there's like a I don't know, like a stake or something with like a purple swirl around it or something. like a, Almost like a snake. It kind of reminds me of the medical thing with the snake around it. But anyway, uh, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. And hopefully I'll see you guys in another video. Take care, guys. Bye.